Turner Facilities Management. He'll be the commissioning agent for our new school. Uh, I went with Kevin from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We went throughout the entire school on on every part of the school, the uh, air handlers, the boiler, the air conditioner, everything you think of, the men's room, the security system, every system, his turn of facilities management will be commissioning the school. It'll also be uh, when the things like the boiler or everything are being fired up or we get the paperwork for, for them or any paperwork that has to be done it will be taped by our cable TV in order, we, in order that we have a backup to the backup. So we'll know how to do anything once our facility, facilities manager leaves. We'll always have a backup. Okay, while I was there Friday, I was, I was told the furniture from the old high school is being moved over. We're getting furniture deliveries. The, res the resolution log is being taken care of by Charmit. Building, building B is just about complete. The lockers are in. All systems are, are, on, are go. The entire school, the, the air handlers are working. Just every, everything's just about working. It's just, as you go in, it, it's just final touches and uh, and things like that. They're just doing, uh, they're just completing it now. And uh, the gym is complete. The seats are in, everything else is in. The lines are on the floor. The admin's going to relocate two rooms in the new school on 9th of July. Uh, they hired four, I, I mean, they bought 420 foot cargo containers on site just for storage. The final work on the, on the commons is ongoing, but there isn't much left to do. As I said before, the gym is complete. The auditorium, the seats are in, the, and the, uh, they were putting hardwood floor down on the uh, stage, and that should be complete sometime this week. And uh, while they were in there, the auditorium is one of the areas in the school that does have air conditioning. It, it was nice during my uh, little visit in the auditorium. It really was nice. Uh, all the startups are ongoing, and the top coat will be put on in December in the uh, parking lot. And the 27th of July, the uh, town will take ownership. And uh, that's about all I have now. Uh, I have another meeting on Wednesday, a construction meeting. And it just seems like we're getting toward the end. And if, as, you, as you go on the site, I forgot, I forgot to I let this out a little bit. As you go on the site, if you look to the south side of the field, a, a field for a football field is being worked on right now. They're trying to put the base on it before the AstroTurf goes down. And the AstroTurf is weather permitting, so all the work has to be done before it gets to 40 degrees. The field is supposed to be ready in November, but if we don't get the work done now, it, if, it, if we don't make it by November, it'll have to wait till next year. But I, I think we're, we won't have a problem. The final company should be picked this week. We're just trying to wait on a better price and to add more to the uh, athletic fields if we could. That's about it. Okay. Question. Questions. Go ahead. What is the function of the commissioning agent? He's the one that's going to test every system out in the system, in the, in the school. Every, every, he, he does the, the test for the MSBA. All the mechanicals, you mean? Everything. The AC, yep. heat. Water, air, Is he heat. working for the town? No. Or is he working for he the He works state? for the MSBA. Okay. His name is Kevin Morrow from Turner's Facilities, facilities Management. So that's a standard requirement of the MSBA that they yes. hire somebody to yes. check those systems. The, um, this isn't directly related to what you said, but I'm looking at this letter regarding the changes and so forth in the contingency fund. It, it, is my understanding correct that the contingency fund 
cannot be used to do something different. It's a contingency in case something happens to raise unexpectedly the cost of something. But if we have leftover <coughs> contingency fund money, are we free to use that for any purpose in the school? I do believe if we, we have contingency money left over, we can use it, but I don't think it's reimbursable. Okay, so in other words, if we use it, we have to put in that money. Right. Okay, so the contingency fund cannot be used for, for instance, for the school, for the fields. It right? can be used, but it's not reimbursable. Yeah, we can, we can spend anything we want that's not reimbursable. Right. But the contingency was built into the reimbursable amount so that to the extent we have some of that money is not used then is it the intention that that money would actually reduce the total cost of the school I'm not sure I couldn't give you what the contingencies are going to be until the end of the project that part I understand Bruce my question is if there are sums left over in the contingency fund will those monies go to reduce the otherwise 43 million whatever it was going to be i'm not positive i can't I okay can you find really, out i will find out okay do you still have to wear a hot hat when you go down there uh yes you do okay well when the kids go still a school, construction zone are you going to have to buy hot hats for them i think you know, as of august 20th the ribbon cutting the hot hats will be out okay that's the final day of the hot august hat. 20th do they have to wear it when they cut the ribbon in case the ribbon boomerangs? Never know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, have you read the, that agreement we had? We didn't sign that last time. We didn't make a motion to approve it. Yeah. I thought we gave the authority to sign it. No. Uh, oh, they came out? Not this budget not, revision. Not this budget. This, to keep the numbers in order here, we have to make a motion. To sign that you know because we were at 10 11 and this is now coming in at 12 although we did make a motion to approve it documents weren't there to sign so we just need a motion to sign the final document to send it off to okay. is the motion going to be authorized to authorize the chair for yeah authorize that. myself to do it yeah i'll make a motion that the board approve and authorize the chair to sign the project funding agreement budget revision request number 12. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Gravel permit fee. All right. This discussion on this is a renewal fee. Is that what we talked about last week? Or fees? Total fees. You can talk about whatever you want. It was okay. Well, it was stated by the former chairman that the decisions made at that previous meeting uh, were based not on good information, which I think everyone agrees that that's the case. If you don't, let me know. So, and the board sets the fees. Right. So the discussion will be on the. We have a $1,200 fee up front on a new gravel pit. And there's a renewal fee of $400 today. That's what it, the, that's what the board voted. That's what the board voted on last year. So, discussion. Do we have any comment? I, that renewal fee is, is, um, is that annually? It seems kind of high for an annual. 400 yeah I think well my understanding when I was on the board last year when the $1,200 fee was for which I agreed with the $400 fee <clears throat> I think before that was 50 when it was 50 we made it 400 was for pits that were 25 yeah we're going we you're going back a few years ago to, mm -hmm. yeah right but I'm just talking last year when I came on the board it was it 50 was a, I believe 50 no I think yeah. it was 100 uh, no, I believe it was 50. 50 I think okay. we set it to 50. And then we made it 400, and the problem was the 400 was for pits that were dormant. Three years, four years, five years. That was the problem. And this, to charge them, I think we should be have the capability 
Uh, yeah, renewal fee, $50 after you did your first thing. And we did it every year, fine. But when a pit comes in and it hasn't been worked for four or five years, then the question is, well, what are they renewing? And I think that's where that what do you mean 400. By what are they renewing? Well, if you've been dormant for four years, yeah. now you come in, I think it should be, it's got to be inspected again. Well, presumably, you'd renew, we, we renew the licenses annually. Correct. We don't issue multi year licenses. Correct. We could, but we don't. Okay. So I don't understand why. What well, means, so the question what is, is if the. Being dormant. It expires. After a year, the, pit ex the permit it, expires. It expires. If you don't come, renew if it. If they don't renew it. Correct. On its face, yes. That's okay, correct. so three years later they come back, they want to open the pit up again. Okay. That was the question I had. That would be a. They new should, should they do 1,200? 400? What? Well, again. Again, they're starting the pit all over again. And I, I don't think it should be 12, personally. I think it should be a figure that if we got to send someone out for two hours just to see where the pit's at, what they've done, then there should be a fee. There's no question that the town is entitled to charge a fee for the necessary work that needs to be done. There's no question about right. that. Okay. But what you have to think about is what exactly needs to be done? I, I agree with you. Okay. So when you, and that's the question I had last year, that when you're renewing a pit, mm -hmm. if it's four years, five years old. That wouldn't be a renewal it, now, that would be Well, that would be renewal. start, right. Okay. But again, I thought, well, okay, if, okay, why go new if we have the plans, we have all the documentation, yeah. then we should, and I said this last year, we should charge $400 for them to come in and just review everything. Not 12, but if the pit's in good stay all the way through it and $50. And the paperwork is on file. It's yeah, continuous. I mean, that's, yeah. that's fine. That, that's where the, I thought, that, that's where I put the 400 last year. And it's only the pits that are old, not a new pit. I, I don't think that should be the fee if the pit's continually running every year. The documentation comes in 30 days before. You're defining a new, there's a, a net new pit, never been registered at the town. There's a fee associated with that, and that has to do with plan review, potential site inspection, administrative costs, right? I think yeah. we've got to get a number on that. Yes. What, what is fair and reasonable based on the actual work that's conducted. And what is involved right. in, in a review of the plan? Okay. Yeah, can, okay. hold that thought for now. All right. But okay. from what I understand, then the second tier is you have a renewal. You first year you got your permit, the next year you come in for your renewal. There's administrative work associated with that. There's no re-site inspection or anything like that necessarily. Okay, what, what is administrative work? And you have to actually work? type up the, the renewal of the, the permit and reissue. Okay, we, we have the, we send, correct me if I'm wrong, Tracy, we send the applicant before the renewal date, mm -hmm. a right. sheet telling them mm -hmm. they have to tell us how much and the kind of material they removed right. yep. and, and so forth. Right. Okay. Yeah. They, they tell us that. Now, we get it, so what do we do with it? We put it in the folder that's associated with the original plans. Okay. And we file it. All right, and how much How much time do you think that Minimal, takes? I agree. Okay. Right, I mean, I'm, we're in agree with you, it's We're minimal. in total agreement. And then okay. there's a third classification, which is you didn't continually, you, you weren't continuous on your renewals. So you got inspected the first year, the second year, maybe you came back for that minimal work, and then all of a sudden there's a lapse. You didn't, for whatever reason, for through one year, two yeah. years, three years, you didn't come back. That creates a new class of level of work, potentially. Okay. See, I, I hadn't thought about that aspect of it. In my mind, you apply for a permit, and because there's basically two kinds of permits, or two kinds of operations. The, your goal is to remove the material as fast as you can, because you want to do something right. with the land. So those things have a, they, they end fast, as fast as they can accomplish it. The other is a person that has gravel and he wants to sell it over a number of years. Mm -hmm. He wants it to last a long time. Uh, and a year or so may go by and he may not sell any, but if he wants to keep the permit active, right. you still have to pay the, the fee, you see, so. Well, that's why I say minimal fee yeah. For an active pit, I mean, even if you're not working it, you might as well come in and pay the fee 
to renew it. Yes, but depending if you, if on the amount of the fee. Right. If you just let it go, that's correct. Then you, when you come in, the question is, do we charge them twelve first, again? Yeah, do you get them back we, for the first time? Get a rate we, set that's, you know. Well, are you, are you thinking that twelve hundred dollars for the initial fee is is a reasonable fee? Well, I'm I'm sticking with that fee at the moment in discussion. Okay, but what what, what are we doing for the twelve hundred dollars? Well, the twelve hundred dollars, from what I can see and what I've read, is the the review of the print, the um, going out to the site, seeing finding the set points for the pit, okay, the phases reclamation, making sure there's no aquifer below well, it. Reclamation now. Well, no, but I mean the in the in the plan you're reviewing what's I'm just that's all okay. in the plan. You got to make sure there's no aquifer underneath there. I well, mean you I, don't well you don't want someone over an aquifer that's going to go too deep or I mean for review I would think uh, the person has a perfect right to dig within the aquifer well I mean that's that's just what uh, you know, in my opinion you might I say think, that's kind of foolish because your machine's going to get stuck that water. stuff that stuff gets reviewed though Peter um, where, where the, what's underneath you I mean it may not do anything it may say yeah well you know you get well, this. I, I don't recall in my, in my uh, from the stuff I read those are one of the things that and if some of them, if you're on an aquifer, the bond is higher. Um, no, I don't, not so much in this town. I'm just going through all the yeah. review I've been doing. So, uh, I mean, Ben is here to give us some input yeah. if you want on just Well, I'd be happy to hear from anybody because I, you know, my only, my goal is that we don't cheat people, that the fees be reasonable because when a fee is not reasonable, people look for and find ways to avoid getting a permit. You see, then you have nothing. You have right. no money, and you have no permit that you can hold over their head. So that's, that's the counter. Right, well, I think the discussion here is to get a fee that we can all live with and keep. So we're not changing in and out every year. I mean, that's what I'm hoping. Do, do you agree that, well, can we agree that there's either three classes of fees or two classes and, and the one the discrepancy being what happens on an elapsed period do you reset and you have to come back for a first time yeah that the bylaw is silent it's silent on it it's silent right. on that the bylaw says we can renew a permit without holding a public hearing doesn't mean we're not allowed to have a public hearing right. it means it's not required by the bylaw but the bylaw is silent on um for instance, uh, I'm a licensed insurance broker agent. If my license lapses, uh, I think there's two years I can go back and just mm -hmm. renew it, even though it has lapsed. So if not, you've got to go all over again, right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's the problem we seem to be getting caught around, right. too, is like what happens when we know there's X amount of hours to do first time, there's Y amount to do continual renewal. When there's a lapse, that becomes a, a, a bit of a variable yeah. because it could be three, I and mean, it's a difference if you lapse yeah. one year versus five and, years. And that might be a function of the size. Right, right. And, and circumstances peculiar to that particular property where those things come in. I have a question for you. The, where the school is now, the north side of that pit that was dug too deep, why wasn't that ever, ever inspected? What do you mean when by neither the deep? company? What, what do you mean by dug too deep? It was dug way too deep than what it should have been. What? Well, how, what do you base that on, Bruce? Hmm. Just by looking what 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 is out there. Well, okay. So and now was, we got to bring fill was, in. Yes, but that's not unusual. When you're yeah. when you're digging gravel, you follow the material. And if what you're looking for is sand, you don't want bony gravel. You follow the sand, and it makes takes you below the, the grade that you eventually want to come back to. That just means after you take the sand that you want that's down at this level, you replace it with some other material that you don't need. My question is, why did why did that site get left the way it was, and that was the end of it? Nobody ever said anything. You know, yeah. You, you I'm, I'm not familiar with the the particular site, but the mere fact that they went deeper than what you think they should have gone is not... No, I'm not saying yeah, that. Or anybody, Just by anybody, the water table. Anybody, yeah, 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 you the, can go below the water table. See? There's nothing that says you can't dig into the... If I want to dig a pond someplace, I'm, I'm free to do that. All right. Well, let's listen to Ben. Could you give us 
quick overview of maybe what you would do in a new pit? Actually, can we I would start with the easy one. Okay. A renewal. Um, actually, my two cents on this is you either have a new application or you have a renewal. There's no in between. Um, if if it is if the license in this case lapsed, my opinion, they should file a whole new application and pay a whole new application fee. Uh, that that would be no different from a planning board application, site plan, subdivision, conservation, order of conditions. If it expires, you come in with a whole new application. Review fees, on the other <coughs> hand, I agree. There should be some variability there. You know, whether it's a subdivision application, we had that discussion. You yeah. know, if, if they're coming in just to re-up the application, review fees are different. All right, so with that said. Well, Ben, pause you. And, and you say that because the amount of work involved once you've lapsed your renewal is the same as the first time. Essentially, yes. I mean, it's a whole new application, submitting all the information. That's not what Jay asked. I'm sorry? That's not what Jay asked. Jay asked if you have, you submitted all the application, all the drawings and schmarrings, and for some reason you have a heart attack and there's no, nothing goes on for three years. Mm -hmm. So why is it everything, why is it everything have to be new? I'm trying to get it. You, you, it's you a whole new jump. submittal. Why? Because it's a whole, it, and it's in essence a whole separate project. Why? Because it's you have property. one that has expired and now you're coming in for a new project because that one has expired. That part I understand. My, my, my trying to get to the idea again, my basic premise is the town is entitled to charge a fee Correct. for work that needs to be done in order to issue a license. Correct. Now, under the scenario that somebody applies for a permit, gets all the materials, it gives it everything to us. And, but before he starts, you have a heart attack. So for two years or three years, you're recovering. Now tell me, and the land hasn't changed, so tell me why I'm justified to telling that person, I'm sorry, um, too bad you had a heart attack, but we want new engineering drawings, even though the land hasn't changed, and we want all this stuff new. That's See, I'm not that thinking is like a bureaucrat. I'm, not, I'm thinking about the person. Correct. Okay, so tell I, me. I understand where you're coming from. Okay. I guess the point I'm trying to make, it's a new application. <laughs> it's it's either one or the other. on the other foot and say, Huh? Any change in the ownership? Right. You, you, We're assuming you, it's the same owner now, right? The guy that had I, the that's going. that's perfectly yeah. fine too. It's, okay. it's. You see the. This is not the only place you'll see this. Oh, I, I know. I see. I'm going to have to span across time. Board of Health, ZBA, Planning Board, Conservation, Building, the whole night. I don't think you can set up, in my opinion. Now I know the board here is the, are the ones that are going to establish what this fee is whether we want to call it a review fee, an application fee, a submittal fee, whatever it may be, it's a, it's a new application. It expired. They could very well submit the same plans, but a whole new application with a whole new application fee. I think what- Have you ever heard of the Paperwork Reduction Act? <laughs> I guess it gov doesn't apply to governments. Well, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll even point out something else. It's in our bylaw it's really not up to the town to send out a notice for the renewal. It's the, oh, I know that. It's the responsibility of the property owner, the pit owner, to within 30 days submit an annual report, submit all the required paperwork yes. with the required fee, whatever it may be. That, that's correct. Um, I'm not saying that you know where we're at is right, but it, you have a, an application for a license and you have a renewal for that license. Have you seen the, what we send out, by the way, a bylaw does not prohibit the town from sending out a notice. Correct. Just as though I get a notice that one of my main licenses are expiring. That's, you know. That's, that would be the right thing to do. Yes. And it's easier for the town because we send out a standard form mm -hmm. that they can fill in with a standard format. Correct. If they set their own narrative in, it would be harder to actually review it. So we're doing ourselves a favor as well as providing an accommodation 
for the owner. Correct. And that's all part of the whole application package that they receive, which includes the, the actual license application, but also the annual report and any other documentation that is then filled in and approved and documented yes. and then sent to the board. Which Basic, you, basically, though, Peter, you come in and renew your pit. And you yeah, don't have I, to worry not, about this. Yeah, yeah, Pay the yeah, $50. Absolutely. And, absolutely. I'm just trying to attack. understand mm -hmm. a <laughs> rational justification right. for right. telling someone who did all the engineering work, paid the thousands of dollars to have the blueprints done, gave it to the board, got a license, and had a heart attack, and then we're telling them, gee, we like you, but we want you to do all of that over again. No, no, no. just the next year. He has to keep That's it current. No, 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 I understand that. But I'm right. saying if, if for some reason he doesn't. But it's not on the town's responsibility to make sure that each one of these pit people are babysat and do no, their renewals. It, it certainly is not. And you can switch the footer on, say, if the gravel inspector leaves the town and a new one comes in, well, he has to review the whole package again. Well, he had a heart attack. He left. Right. Okay. All right. If, if the board has a, quote, gravel pit inspector, unlike the, the young conservation agent that said she walks into a gravel pit and doesn't know what she's looking at, if you have someone who actually knows what they're looking at, it is no onerous task to, quote, review the material. You know, if somebody tells you it is, they need some remedial education in that field. Well, for the record, I am the gravel pit inspector I know that. for the town. <laughs> All right, so Ben, in the context of a first-time renewal, can you just, a first-time application, can you just uh, kind of outline what is involved? Yeah, I mean, ba basically from what I understand, um, haven't had one since I've been here, but I've, I've dealt with it. Actually, can I start with the renewal and go back to that? Because I think it'll, it, it lays the groundwork for a whole new application. Okay. Um, going back, it should be in your file, um, but I had pulled this together back in January um, at the request of the town manager. Um, not so much for the renewal that was up at that particular time, but just to give some kind of framework for you know, the method to my madness and where I came up with this and why I felt that this value was more appropriate. Um, and understanding that not each one is going to be the same uh, based on size, complexity of the operations, whether or not they've had anything done over the years, if they've maintained it or if they haven't. But what I tried to do is just take a little realistic viewpoint of you got some office work, you got some field work, take those hours combined at an approved rate based on what the Board of Selectmen have, and came up with a value. Um, Are you referring to the memo you sent? It, well, that's actually just a handwritten Yeah, summary. okay. Um, yeah. You know, and, and trying to be somewhat... Yeah. Yeah you know, fair across the board. Again, some are going to take more than others, some are going to take less. But, I mean, to be honest, an hour's worth of time is not enough to do that. Well, let, let's break it down, because in your memo, you stated yep. the preparation and mailing of the renewal form. Yep. Half an hour. Yep. Now, we have the form on the computer. Mm -hmm. We just push a button and print it. Now, how do we get half an hour from that? Well, I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna count straws here, I mean, oh. they, they, there's a start and a finish from me printing that out, putting it in a box, coming over here to mail it. I mean, collectively, for me to travel from the DPW, if we want to get that that nitpicky, okay. half an hour, I don't think is too much out of the question. Are, are you telling the board that you are going to print this renewal form? Yeah, that is well, correct. If, if that's the case, I think that's a very poor use of your time. I would love to be able to give some of this to other people, but at the present time, that is the reason why I inherited the gravel pit inspector. Well, I think there we was need no to other, look at that people. aspect of it, because it doesn't make sense to have an engineer that has a ton of work to do to sit at a computer and print out, how many pages is it, Tracy, two pages, the renewal thing? Well, that, that's everything, because you send out the renewal and the whole thing. But it's already online. If it isn't, I'll make it up for you 
No, it's, it's online. Okay. It's already online. online. I don't do any of that. You, the, the, you oh, okay. The but you used to do that. That used to be done here in our office. Yes. Okay. But they were not, um, I don't believe this office was mailing out any renewal forms. It was, um, they would come in and if they knew they were up for renewal, they would provide the documentation to the office. Uh, when I was on the board, we used to send out the renewal forms. Okay, well. Um, and it wasn't a lot of work. No. No, it's not. Uh, I mean, not it's, it's a form no. letter. Yeah, no. but it and does. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I know how busy you are. I would love for it to take five minutes, but the reality is it's not going to take five minutes. And for you to have to do it and then drive over here to mail it, I mean, none of this makes any sense. Now, again, I want to preface this by saying this is going to fluctuate even, and I know that is not something that you want to hear. But this was something that I said, this for a renewal is something I could live with. Me, the gravel pit inspector for the town of Oxbridge, that was reasonable to assess somebody for the renewal of their application. Well, under the state law, regarding fees, because it's easy for a town to call it a fee, but in fact, in fact it's a tax, in order to avoid <laughs> that. In those cases, courts have thrown the fee out. It's easy to do that. The reality is that when we figure the cost of a fee, we don't take the highest paid person and say, here, we want you to do these things. That's not how it works. I, I totally agree. I mean, I, if I'll add one more thing to this, send it out to a consultant and you're going to pay $130 to $150 per hour for them to do it. That's not the choice because there are very few instances where we need a consultant. In those cases, we can do that. We have the authority to do that if the occasion arises. But you cannot set a ongoing standard fee based on the worst case scenario. Well, if I, I can tell you right now, if I were the permit holder, I would not pay the fee. Well, then you would be in violation court, of the, the earth removal by law of the town of And I would win. I don't think you would. Well, um, you are in, Let's you, go you back are in violation. To the fees, yeah. So again, this is uh, my, this is my breakdown <laughs> to justify the $400 fee for any project. Okay, and I'm telling you based on my experience that is just not applicable. I would be I mean, more than happy to. You do the work for less than that, and you shouldn't be doing that work. Not that routine stuff. I, 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 am, I am open to any suggestions or any other people that want to become the gravel pit inspector for the town of Oxbridge. Ben, can you just go through this office work, review of submitted information? What, is that an engineer that reviews it, or could this be reviewed for completeness? What's being reviewed? I didn't hear the whole... Is, is that being reviewed by an engineer, or is that being reviewed, reviewed for... by anybody. For completeness. Just make sure they fill out the form. Yep. Okay. Prep and mailing renewal and summary memo to BOS following site visit. So prep and mailing of the renewal notice seems like it could be... a uh, done by anyone in summary memo to the BOS following site visits. What, what does that include and who's the skill that would set? Be, that would be similar to the memo. That would be just like the memo I sent on the, uh, the last renewal application. It summarizes the whole site visit. In this case, but it's I done by the engineer. It, 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 whoever is the responsible party doing the renewal. In this case, it was me. Whoever did the site visit would write it, correct? Correct. If there was a site visit. The board, under the bylaw, the board has the authority to visit the site, inspect the site at any reasonable time. It is not a requirement that we do that for renewal. I can. I, I sent the board copies of all this stuff. There we have it. it okay. All right. <clears throat> and you know the the report that they give us is they tell us how many yards they, they removed. Right. No, I understand. Now, what is it to review? The man says 2,000 yards, it's, it's 2,000 yards. We ask for the, amount, the type of material. If it's a bank run gravel or sand, he writes down sand or gravel. Well, it'd be nice what to go out there do? and see what he did actually take. You, you're welcome if you want. Well, that's kind of what you're we do. You're welcome if you want. It's only a renewal. 
Yeah, you can do that if you want. I, I know. That's why we're trying to get a standard here. We're all over the place. What's all over here, all over the place? The fees. It's up and down. Every year it changes. I think no, we want to no, set the... No, The fees have been stable for years and years until... Um, what was her name? I forgot. I walk into a gravel pit and don't know what I'm looking at. What was her name? Oh, it was the conservation Who was agent. it? It was the conservation Yeah. Agent. Okay, the Rachel. conservation Rachel. That's when all this stuff started. Right. So it, that, that's not the history. No, but it's, it's been... 1200 has been here for how long? 43 years? Five years? I don't think five. But anyway. Well, that's where we're at right now. Okay. So let's, yeah, no, I know that. Let's get back I on know track that. here. But don't, don't make it appear as though that has been, as, as Tracy said, it's always been 1,200. No. The time you were here, right? Correct. Okay. All right, so. We got the 12. So we're really talking about the renewals, I think. I mean, the only, uh, the only other way to do this is on a direct time and materials basis, and that does not work in this case because the people need to pay a renewal fee, and what are they going to pay if they don't know what it's going to cost to, to have this done? Because everyone's going to be different. A, a, a set fee is the best way to do it. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with that. And that's why I developed that for but, a renewal. But the fee has to be based on the actual work involved. and. We do not use the highest paid, one of the highest paid people in town to do clerical work. That's not how the fee structure is supposed to be. There is an approved fee that was approved by the Board of Selectmen yes. of $90 an hour, which is what this was based on. But you can't do that. Because you're talking you? about office work. You can't charge $90 an hour for office work then. And that's what you did here. I beg to differ, and now we're just getting caught in the minutia of what's going on here. Uh, well, your minutia is somebody else's livelihood, somebody else's money. And I'll tell you, I've been assessed fees by other towns, and I tell them I'm not going to pay that. And they have to back down because no, they do not. It's, a, it's an illegal tax. That's something for you to decide here. All I can do is I can give you my interpretation or my recommendation. I don't know what else to give you on that. I mean, we can sit here and debate the legality or the, I don't disagree with that. the validity of fees, um, but that's, for lack of a better term, that's beyond my pay grade. That's up to the board sitting in front of me. All I can do is if I'm asked for a recommendation, and that's what I did, and that's where we're at today. And now we're six months later, we're here debating whether or not this is an acceptable fee after we but debated this once before. So, in, in the board's defense, Ben, uh, the board never saw your memo. When they voted on that fee, they were told that by the manager that he had something from you, but it wasn't given to the board. So they had that I cannot a control. Of that. Ben, do you visit every site? I would. Have you? I've only done one so far. We've only had I, one renewal and you came out and you visited them. Okay. How about the water table? Are you concerned about them going into the water table? I mean, I guess there is a concern. Uh, part of that would, you know, I think would fall under other controlling features. Um, you know, something that has just come to light in my mind with these gravel pits and the size of the gravel pits is that the owners have a stormwater pollution prevention plan which would cover stuff about, you know, regarding contamination, uh, proximity to groundwater or other water resources, Eric. I'm not talking conservation. Um, I'm not either. I'm talking so, I mean, the only way you would know where the water table is is to have test pits or have some kind of other test well information. It would be something I would definitely be concerned with. Um, but from the maps that are upstairs and around here, there is some indication where the water table is, isn't it? Uh, um, yes and no. But you still I mean, need the test pit. Yeah, you'd still need on site. Yeah. I mean, superficial geology maps can only get you so far. Right. And if, if people actively renewed every single year, would you feel inclined that we visit the site every single year? I, this is the engineer in me talking. 
I, I, I will not sign my name to anything until I've had a chance to review it. And if that takes going out to the site, by all means, I'd be out at the site. You know, because one of their things in their renewals, they need to show and document quantities, locations where material was removed. I sure, I surely would want to see that and verify that. Uh, I'm sorry, they don't have to document uh, where things were removed. The, the plan submitted shows the area that you know they intend to excavate during the whole process, but there's nothing that stipulates that every year they have to show exactly where. Um, actually, I beg to differ because there is information in the bylaw that states that at the end of uh, or an area, say they have a, a phased out area, yeah. they need to show the area that was reclaimed, a what was done there, yeah. when it how was, much when was it's phased back. out. Correct. But that may not be on an annual basis. Correct. Here's our application. Yeah. So that's the switch, right? It's, it's to make this thing very cost is whether or not a site visit happens. Peter, your argument is that one's not required. One's not mandated by the bylaw. The board has the authority at any time that it wishes to inspect the site, either itself or by appointing somebody to do that. Correct. Specific locations not required. So otherwise it's an hour and a half task, administrative task, to do up the paperwork, write up a letter, you know, the three things. Review the submitted information, it prep and mailing of the renewal notes. If it takes more than 10 minutes to prepare, to print the renewal form mm -hmm. and mail it to the applicant, and then when you get it back to look at it, if it takes more than 10 minutes, there's something wrong. Okay. Review the submitted information, summary memo. I don't think anything can happen in 10 minutes so there's a minimum increment because you're disrupting but, what, your but you're dis disrupting your someone's other task so there's a minimum min, uh, work increment that you have to fill in it's not 10 minutes I would say you can argue 15 then I, I perhaps join your side or half hour but it's not 10 minutes well I don't think it would take 10 minutes but I'm allowing time right, you got to find the file on your computer it's, you know, things have to happen so let's say it's an hour if you can get one at the and what we base these rates are on the lowest minimum wage person capable of executing this task. That's what we did with all the other when we do this three years ago. Yes, if I remember correctly. Bruce, yes. So the clerical that? clerical tax uh, 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 charged a clerical rate. Right. You know. So that's one part of the fee, which uh, we'll have to look up in the numbers for what the lowest clerical task that can be done in the DPW office is. It's probably what around fifteen dollars an hour or something like that. A little bit more. Okay. So it's probably around fifty dollars just for the clerical stuff. Then there's this optional component. We'll look it up. I'm not trying to be precise right now. I'm just trying to break it down into its pieces. And then on top of that, then there's this whole site visit, which we're not mandated to do, but we may issue. Yes. So is it not possible to say that if the board deems a site visit appropriate that then this fee can then be assessed Th that renewal certainly can do that when when the board used to go out and look at these things periodically we would take a Saturday and we'd go to four or five which is about what we had and the whole thing didn't take you know an hour tops to do all of them an hour times five people times of zero dollars an hour I guess it doesn't zero matter dollars right? an hour. Well, the, the reason <laughs> Ben has got a seal that he's putting on the report. No, he doesn't. You don't stamp it. Your reports. There's nothing to stamp. As an engineer, you don't stamp it. Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't prepare the report. I mean, the the documents that are submitted. I mean, again, in the in the one instance that uh, there's been a renewal, um, the engineered plan was was stamped by the engineer. Um, but that plan in and of itself was the overall, you know, you had the proposed condition, the existing condition, and they're working towards that proposed condition. So yeah, in that case, that was a, the same plan that they submitted in the first place. With, you know, I wanna say in this one, they had, you know, areas identified that, you know, this is the area of uh, 
of work over the past year, and we've stockpiled that material over here. Some of them, I doubt, would even be that much that detailed. What's the fines if you if you over if you break plan or over mine your gravel compared to what you said you're going to do? What's what's the consequence? I guess we'd have to refer to the the bylaw. Two hundred dollars per day for each such violation of overmining, or for something that's not in compliance yeah, with the approved permit. As what? I, in my mind, anything that's not in compliance with the the issued license. If the license say it says you're supposed to go down to elevation one hundred and you go down to elevation seventy, to me that you're in violation of your permit. That, uh, that's not how the bylaws written. The we ask for existing grades correct and then we ask for final grade correct and a person is perfectly free to go below the final grade so long as when they're finished they bring it back up to the stated grade I think we can argue that but the perm well how can you argue that the, the bylaw says you give us the grade now the grade you're going to end up with there's nothing to says you can't go below that. And as you know, you follow the material. If the material you want is lower than the final grade, you take that out and you replace it with other material that's above the grade that you don't need. But I mean, there's nothing to argue about there. That's just a plain reality. Well, when, when is it ever inspected? Say it again. When, when are you ever held to that final grade? When the person, says, I'm, the person says, I'm all done and I want my bond back. Okay, well, that's why we have term. the bond. The, I, I re reclaimed what I said I was going to do. I did everything. I, you said, come on and look and make sure you agree that I did it and give me my money back. It would seem that the site inspection would be important then for the release of the bond and so that this fee for, or the work associated with site inspection should only occur upon release of the bond at the end of the project. Uh, in order to release the bond, you, you'd want to make sure that the, the the final grade was either as stated or a, something you agree yeah. to. Do we charge a fee for that final release of the bond? No. You also have to inspect the reclamation, make sure that when they're done, sure. make sure they. Yeah. You know. It sounds like it's a free for all up until the point that you say it's done, and then we got to have some... And see, and I, I totally disagree with that, because I think there's, a, there's an element of health and safety in there mm -hmm. that I, needs, I think needs to be integral with that whole process. Okay. And if it's something, you know, I mean, again, we're throwing hypotheticals out there, but if it's something like that, where they're, you know, maybe they are going to, they're going to fill that, that area back in. But if you have an approved license based on the assumption that you're going to go down to this elevation, and you go beyond that, you're in violation of that license. No, I'm sorry. That's my we, opinion. We give two things, the existing topography and the final grade. Mm -hmm. And nothing, nothing in the bylaw says that you can fine anybody if they go below that. They can go below that and then come back up to it. And the final inspection is usually very easy because generally speaking, what they end up with is a flat area or a gentle slope from the road up to some other point. Sure, if everything's done properly. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, why I'm, I'm saying that North Field, we don't know how much was supposed to be taken out of there and how much was supposed to be put back. If we did, that would answer that question. I'll bet you that's never been inspected out there. I think you're going to find, Bruce, I'm not sure, but that may be one of the permit, uh, the gravel pits that was in operation preceding the current bylaws. The bylaws. So they weren't, um, you know, but that was the old Rosenfeld pit, right? Right. Okay. Now there were some new areas that they had that they got permits for that were covered by the bylaw. But some of that area goes way, it goes way back. back. Yes. It goes way back. Yes. All right. Well, let's, I'm, I'm going to give you my opinion. I think the $1,200 is, is fair. I mean, I've looked at all these towns today. I spent a lot of time. Sutton charges $900 a year. So, not a year. Douglas, $2,000 for the first acre, $500 for each additional acre. I mean, 
To me, the $1,200 is a fair number for a new pit. Renewal, I think, should be $100 for a renewal. Keep the renewal up. You don't have to pay any more. Now, the problem I have is that one that's been dormant for five years. I'm not sure if it should be the 12. The ones we have existing today is the problem. Uh, that's where I'm kind of sitting right now. I, I think it should be $600. Renewal? For a pit that's been sitting for five years. No, I because all the, all, all the plans are in, okay. I don't think it should be 12. I mean, it's... I, I, that part I don't care about. However, I want to remind you, basing fees on what other towns charge I'm not, is, is not the way to do it. I know it, Peter. You say towns that all the time. Towns like governments everywhere want to steal from people because they have power and most people go along with it. My opinion. But I don't want the town of Oxbridge to steal from people. Okay. True. That's I all. I, of course. I never give I anybody else's opinion. I know. It's always your opinion. opinion. Man, oh, Shevitz. <laughs> and you can just, just got mine. Can I just throw one thing out there? And, and again, I caution to the board because this is going to have a rippling effect on all other applications from all other departments. This should be, in my opinion, cut and dry. There's an application fee. There's a renewal fee. If it, if it expires, it should be the full thing, whatever you choose that to be. But I, I think you're, you're, you're running. You're, there's a slippery slope here when you start trying to make concessions that, well, this was once functioning. It's no different. A subdivision plan comes in, it's what, $400 plus so many dollars per lot? That expires, you come in with an application fee of $400 plus X dollars for each lot. Plain and simple. There's no in between, well, you did it once before. You know, it's unfortunate that those things happen. It's unfortunate that people get sick and then things get left behind. But you know what? The cost of doing business. Responsibility, maybe? My, my, I, I'm not looking to charge anybody fees, but I surely want something to cover my effort and my time. $100 isn't going to cut it. $100 is not worth my time to drive out to a site across town. That's the reality. I know that's not easy ben, to swallow. Ben, why that doesn't cover my time? Why is it an annual inspection? Why not every two years? Why not every six months? Because the bylaw says years? that it's a one-year license. But you don't have to forget. Forget what the bylaw says, because the bylaw doesn't mean it's right. We found that. In the I past. agree. What drives when you should inspect a pit? Well, if somebody's going to submit me, gravel pit inspector, information, I'm going to go out and verify it. And what, how, how are you going to do that? I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to drive out there. Okay. And hopefully have a town vehicle so I don't have to charge mileage back to the town for me to use my personal okay. car. Okay. So you're coming out to my property. <coughs> There's a cost, inherent and cost for everything. I wrote down that I removed 300 yards of, of bank run gravel. Mm -hmm. How are you going to determine that I'm telling you the truth or not? Well, I'm going to use my engineering judgment and based on the plans and based on the area of known impact, figure that out. All right. All right. And I've got, I took some from here and some from there and some from there, and, and, but I put some back over here and, and over there. So what are you going to do? Like I said, and this is the engineer in me, because I've been, I've been, this has been said to me on a number of occasions. You're the engineer. You should be able to figure this out. And I'd use my best judgment to say that. That sounds reasonable. Now, keep in mind, there's nothing in the, in, the, in the permit that tells me how much material I'm allowed to remove. That's correct. Okay. So when have I taken too much? When there's the appearance that you have exceeded what is shown in the approved license plan, which is the final condition. But that's the final condition. Correct. Okay, we don't get to that point until years down the road. But I think it's pretty obvious if there's areas that do not conform to what that final plan's shape or depth or, you know, overall dimension is, then there's got to be a problem. I mean, we're getting lost in the blades of grass detail right. here. Yeah. And all I can offer you up is my estimation of what it costs to cover the effort that's at hand. Um, 
we can agree to disagree, and I think that's healthy. I disagree. Um, all I can say is $100 for a renewal fee is, in my opinion, not enough to cover the effort and not enough uh, to cover the expense of the town. So therefore, we're losing money. We are if we're sending you out there, yes. Absolutely, there's no question about that. The question is, do we need to send you out there to do all these things? Quite frankly, there's nobody here to do it. He's that gravel pit inspector. The alternative is outsourcing, and it's way too expensive for taxpayers. No, that's not the alternative. Issue a different gravel pit inspector? Yeah. What's the alternative? Well, you can have, you can, I certainly would be willing to call on Ben if you have a situation where we need that kind of opinion. But to quote review an annual report that says I removed 200 yards of gravel where we don't care how much a person has removed, the only thing we care about is what is at the end of this transition because remember, we have a bond for the property. And I think we said our bond is at $2,000 an acre? Something like that, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, so we have, we have something. People that have gravel are not criminals. They own land. In my experience, people who own land care for it much more diligently than towns who own land. And people who gravel pits have the responsibility to come in here and renew it then. I'm not not the town. I'm not disagreeing with that. Bruce? I think we're pretty much at the end of the discussion here. We're not going to... We're, we're not going to have a meeting of mine, so <laughs> make a motion and, and yeah. take a vote. Right. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to go with the $400 and follow the Ben's recommendation. A second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded to go with the $400 renewal fee, for Ben, and the 1200 The renewal fee is for Ben? $400. As ben, as ben suggested, sorry. Discussion? Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. Discussion? What's to discuss? No, no, be, uh, the may, I know. I thought you may want to say I something. I think that the, that the uh, recurring site inspection is probably excessive. I'd rather see it go that uh, you're subject to an inspection once every three years and you pay a higher fee on the inspection year and keep the, uh, the cost down. That would have been my preferral. And then well, on the when you say subject to inspection, they're inspection they're subject to inspection any time by the right. board. So I understood, but uh, I guess my recommendation would be that we inspect once every three years and on that inspection year you pay our costs associated with doing that inspection. What happens if they didn't renew in those three years? If they didn't renew, uh, I would say that they go back to the first time fee of twelve hundred dollars. It's up to them to keep their renewals active. But if the cost is, the, the problem is if the cost gets too high where it's, you know, four or $500 to renew, you're going to get more lapses in renewal because people aren't going to spend the money and maintain it. But in a non-inspection year, if it's just 50 bucks, you may keep it alive um, and then you don't have to worry into it. Remember, the alternative to paying all those fees is no one pays anything. get a permit. Right. All right. Move on to new business. Appointment. Rec Commission. Move that the board appoint Paul Polino to the Recreation Commission. Second. Which been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, just one quick thing. I'd like to thank Chris Hansen for his years of uh, being on the Rec Commission. Okay. Uh, appointment, Town Council.
move that the board reappoint Patrick Costello with Lewis and Costello, Condon, and Fath. Is that how you pronounce it? For fiscal year 2013 at the hour rate of a hourly rate of $125 an hour. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Appointment of constables. I make a motion that the board reappoint Peter Ostarski and Tom Bentley as constable for the town of Oxbridge. Second. second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We got a request for funds from the Gothaway Trust from the Oxbridge First Food Pantry. Good evening. I'm Deb Blackburn, uh, 321 Douglas Street. I'm here on behalf of the People First Food Pantry, which is located at 19 Douglas Street, to request a, a disbursement from the Mary Goldthwaite Trust. As you all know, the trust was established by the will of Mary Goldthwaite with the purpose of helping residents in need in Oxbridge. And we feel, we actually, the request is for $375, sorry, I skipped that, for our second annual summer lunchbox program. And we feel that the program meets with the purpose of the trust. <clears throat> the lunchbox program is available to all families that receive a free or reduced lunch in the Oxbridge Public Schools, whether or not they're served currently by the food pantry. And with the help of Janice Watt, letters went out at the end of the school year to all those families, which is approximately 200 families. The lunchbox will include milk, bread, lunch meat, peanut butter, jelly, fruit, juice boxes, and a snack. We'll have two dis distributions, one on June 26th, which is actually tomorrow night, and then again on July 31st. We estimate the cost of the lunchbox to be about $18 per family per distribution. And I would like to acknowledge that we have received Hannaford gift cards from members of the community, for which we are very thankful. And also, BJ's was very generous and donated over 700 pounds of Cheez-Its, juice boxes, snack pack cookies and cereal, which will be used in the lunch boxes, but that's over and above the staple items that I spoke of before. So we still will need funding for the staple items. So although those donations help to defray the cost, there is a considerable outlay, and we feel that the $375 would help forward our purpose. If you have any questions, the only, the only, them. Usually we give the interest on that trust right. out, mm -hmm. and there's only $279. All right, well, then $279 would be fine. Whatever is available, that's fine with us. I'll just let you know. Any other questions? Okay, My, thank um, you. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's supposedly quite a bit of money in there. Yeah, there, there was a... This is what the uh, fund was intended for. Right, but it shows on a town report that these are all negatives. I was just wondering where that money is. Well, we have it, but there was a, I believe, I don't know what year well, it was. There was a vote of the board to only um, just expend the interest on the account. I believe it's we 60. Spend the interest every year. Only, yeah, like. What? 60, I think? Is it 60? It's about that, yeah. I don't think Mary would go along with that. I think she dipped in a little bit into the principle. It's crazy. We'd be happy to take whatever is available, <laughs> whether it's the interest or part of the fund. <laughs> what, explain the disparity between a free and reduced lunch. I, I can't speak to that because I don't work in the public school system. Okay. So, I mean, if you want me to find out for you, I would be happy to okay. do that. I just know that the letters went out through the food service program to those who are available to receive free and or reduced lunches. So I can't tell you what the parameters are. I apologize. That's just not our area. Oh, you know how many people are in the free category and how many are in the reduced that category? That I don't know. I don't know. I just know that as a collective group, hmm. 200, I guess it was over 200 families were sent those letters and they fall into that collective group. 
do you have any information regarding generally are people in that those categories are they there year after year after year or do the, are they in it again for a that's short not time and then I apologize, that's not part of the food pantry program, so yeah. I'm here on behalf of the food pantry. Okay, no, I understand, but okay. I thought in, when you decide to provide these things, I thought you might have looked into some of the, yeah. okay. you know, I personally do not, but we can find out that information okay. for you if you'd like. I'd like to make a motion that the board grant $279 to the Eckbridge Food Pantry for the lunch bar program. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Maybe we'll invest it better next year. Be Thank you. I appreciate that too. Okay. Okay. The water sewer update. You want to take this with what you sure. yeah, So this is just a, a follow up. Um, I think right before you gentlemen joined the board. Uh, I attended a meeting with uh, DPW Director Ben Sherman um, and a number of people from the sewer department to speak uh, up in Worcester with a group around potential financing options associated with bringing the existing sewer plant to meet what will be the anticipated needs required for EPA certification or, or the EPA permit. Uh, as part of that discussion, um, there's a couple different options uh, that are available once we identify exactly what those uh, costs will be associated to get us up to snuff. And the financing options uh, fall in the category of 0% financing and 2% financing. Um, and through uh, the discussion with the, the team up there, there's obviously pros and cons associated with, with each approach. So this item, I don't want to get into the details of what that is, but um, folks at the sewer department had reached out and asked uh, that the board uh, find a time where we could come down to the sewer plant, one, to kind of discuss what are the enhancements that are required within there and look at some of the facility firsthand, and secondly, meet with their um, advisors uh, from GHD who have been consulting with them on the correct uh, approach to get the the plant up to snuff and discuss the financing options. So tonight, um, I'll invite uh, Jim or Ben, if they want to speak more to this. Um, the intention was just to have a discussion around what our calendars look like so that we can get something nailed down potentially in the afternoon, uh, in the early part of July, to, uh, to sit down and spend an hour or two down at the sewer plant reviewing the plant and reviewing the proposed uh, changes that might be coming this way. So with that said, anything else to add, Ben or Jim? No, I, I mean, I think you hit it on the head. I mean, it was a preliminary discussion with the regulatory agency, some of the funding people from Boston with SRF, and it was more or less them contacting us um, advising us that you know it, it's definitely an option that that should be considered seriously and uh, so our consultant is working on pulling some information together to give us the idea of, or some some direction on what more are we going to have to do to meet those requirements and uh, as Jay mentioned um, it'd be a good opportunity to you know have a meeting down at the plant and you know one get a kind of feel for what's there get an idea of where, where we're going or where we need to go based on the information that we have from the EPA and the DEP. Um, so yeah, Jake just pretty much hit it on the head with that one. So do we know what the requirements are yet? Yeah, I mean, it, it's basically an expanded version of what we're doing now for our facilities plan. It'll be a full comprehensive wastewater management plan, which as it sounds is more comprehensive than what we are doing presently at the facility level because it's going to look at the overall town and the development of the town and, and potential for for sewerage throughout the town. And are we doing upgrades at the, at the plant itself, right? Ultimately, there, there will be upgrades needed at the plant. Will that be sooner or later? Uh, well, it, it'll all be a oh, result oh. of our new permit when it does come in from the EPA. Before we can get the permit, we have to do the upgrades. 
No. No, no. the permit no, will drive the. Oh, okay. drive. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're just, at this point, everything we've done up to now is to try to be a little bit proactive and not get caught when it actually does come in the mail. So we're trying to move towards, you know, getting things lined up through the, the planning process um, so that we can immediately go right into the design phase uh, once the permit is in. I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of what is it we can expect. Are they looking for greater extraction of heavy metals and yeah. things of that nature? Oh, it's, I mean, Jim, would you like to? I'll let Jim talk the numbers. All right. Cleaner water coming out of the plant, I think, is the <laughs> layman's <laughs> Jim Leg, Department of Public Works. <laughs> Peter, what they're looking for, if you were running a farm, fertilizer, PKN is what you see, uh, potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen. There we, go. Uh, we have limits now on nitrogen and phosphorus. They're going lower. The current plant can't meet them. And what happens? They go into the stream. They grow algae, the algae decreases, uses up the oxygen as it breaks down. Now you get fish and other aquatic organisms, they suffocate. You hear Narragansett Bay, hypoxic zones, that's a direct result of this. And the limits we're looking at, uh, EPA came down two years ago, told us a permit was imminent. We still haven't got it. Apparently the EPA operates in a different time frame than the rest of us. Uh, we know those limits are substantially lower than we are now. And with the current plant, we've been as creative as we can be. We can't go any lower than we are now. Uh, the issue we have in front of us is a couple things, is the continued reliability of the facility. It's 35 years old. We've basically put no capital into it. It runs 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The other issue is the facility wasn't designed to meet where we need to go. Uh, the equivalent, I'd say, is it's uh, Ford used to make a great wagon, Country Squire. You could carry eight kids in it, you know, and everybody used to fight over the back window so they could look out. You know, well, now we know you can't be by the back window. That's where the exhaust fumes are. Well, that car would still run. It would still carry eight people but it wouldn't meet today's emission standards. So that's what we have now. We still have a plant that's running. It meets the standards it was designed for, but doesn't meet the standards it's gonna to have to meet in the future. Uh, the other thing with the permit, we haven't got a permit now. Uh, one of the things we did find out of that meeting is that your chances of get, obtaining funding through the state revolving fund, if you're an under an administrative order, which if we have a permit not complying with it, we would be, you're not, the eligibility drops way off. So we're being proactive, trying to have all the things in place so when that permit arrives at our doorstep, which could be at any time, we're gonna be, have things in place and that's what we're trying to do. We originally started out with a facilities plan and what that was is to really get detailed information on what the cost and what we needed to do would be. Uh, as we went to the discussion that Jay talked about with the state, uh, their state revolving fund, they came out with a, a flow neutral, you know, that was the zero percent. And this, the state's still working out the details on that, but one of the requirements to be eligible is to have a comprehensive wastewater management plan in place. And what we're looking is to, you know, get the board to sign on and agree that, you know, maybe the facilities plan, we need to go that little bit step farther. And this is kind of the equivalent before the school project. They did a feasibility study. This is kind of the wastewater version of a feasibility study. And but I imagine before we can do the study, we need to know exactly what the final parameters are going to be, right? How, how do you we're, we're, in, we're in the process. We, we in, began this study last fall with historical data that we have. We have a pretty good idea of what we're gonna get. Uh, we look at what the permits have been issued statewide and throughout New England, and you know what's out there. Uh, we're unique in the fact that Upper Blackstone, Worcester's facility is fighting a good fight on behalf of their users. And it's actually gone to the federal court and been kicked out of the federal court. Federal court sent them back, said, you two work this out. This doesn't belong here. Uh, 
and Ma Mass DEP and EPA are even at odds about it, and the state of Rhode Island's even throwing their hat into the ring. So until the dust settles from that, I don't anticipate us getting a discharge permit. But when we get it, they've given us an idea of what's in it, you know, and the limits that we can't reach with the current facility. So what, what we're looking for is to kind of have you sign on to, you know, we're trying to be proactive and get a good plan in place about where we need to go. Do we have enough information upon which to do a study? Because I want to know what standards I have to design to, otherwise... Yes, we do. We do. Okay. By the way, I'm told that Albert Einstein spent all his formative years in that wheel well, so uh, <laughs> maybe we should bring those cars back. <laughs> I, and about, the, other, uh, the other part of it, it's I would like you to come to the facility. I think in order for you to make a good educated decision, you need to see where we are now. It's the best way to establish a baseline so you know where we need to go. I'll ask Jim just in case anybody out there wants to know who's going to pay for the upgrades. <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> I just operate the facility that the town provides us. Just jack the rates. <laughs> I'm staying out of that one. Uh, David, I have a question for you as far as the facility goes. When, when are the roof paid for? When is the roof paid for and the silo paid for? The roof and the silo have seven years for the roof. 2018 for the roof. 2018? So we yeah. still got a while there. So, I mean, the, those see. I mean, one of the things that uh, we looked at in, in an email that went out went out over the weekend is we can refi the existing sludge landfill debt, which will bring that down a little bit. We're going to save basically seventy thousand dollars over the life of over the remaining life of that loan. Um, so that'll that'll help that particular CIF lower a little bit, but. I mean, we're going to have to cost out all the options here. I mean, one of the one of the uh, one of the differences in the SR, in the SRF that's been around for a long time. The two percent loans were out there when we were paying seven, eight, nine, ten percent. Um, I we got an SRF in my previous community, and with the inflation rate at that time, that was a that was a that was a great thing. So now. Our advantage here is if we can get to the zero. I mean, right now we're borrowing at three and a half to four percent. The two is still better, but our ultimate goal would be to get down to that zero percent. But the it, reality is, there is no true zero because it's a one percent cost to pay the consultant to get you the zero percent. So I, this is part of the discussion we had up in Worcester that day, and, and that I think the differences of what we're evaluating. So you can do a facility plan, which costs. X and you can qualify for a 2% loan. You can do a master plan which costs 2X and you can get to a 0% loan. So in the end of the day, we're probably looking, at, we did rough numbers on a napkin that day, but it's, you're probably talking a 2% loan or a 1% loan all in, right? depending on which route we go and the level of effort Three. and the return on value for doing the bigger plan is something I think we want to discuss. Because if we can drive that into other areas of the community and get return on it, then it might make more sense. So calendar-wise, um, July, the week, like the second, is it the second week of July? You meet, you at, the board meets Monday, July 9th. Meet on the 9th. It's a regular meeting. I can meet any day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The 10th, 11th, or 12th? I'm pretty, I'm pretty flexible. I'm pretty okay. Yeah, any day but all. On a Wednesday. Actually, that week is not going to work for me. Wednesday, I'm taking up. 
I have meetings on Wednesday, so we go booked. I'm out of town. What about back? the following week, the 16th? I guess 16th, the 17th, 18th, and 19th, around that. Middle of the week. What? Middle of the week, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's over 16th, 17th, 18th. That's next week. We want to go with that. You okay with me? Yeah. What, 17th, 18th, 19th? Oh, any of those days is good with me. 16th, 17th. Yeah. So you guys have Monday, no, Wednesday? No preference. Thursday or Friday, it would be Boy. good for me. Like we look. Friday. So, So I think... They would like to get the folks from GHD to attend too, so there's going to be some calendar meshing to do. But it sounds like the week of the 16th. 16th. All right. And I think we're shooting for in the afternoon. Okay. Would be early afternoon. Do you guys have a preference? Three's good. Thursday or Friday, Ben? Or would it be a good be time? Two. I mean, two. So two o'clock ish and somewhere in that time frame. Yeah. I, I'll send them an email tonight. Is that okay with you guys? Is it the 16th, 2 p.m.? The week of the 16th, somewhere. He's gonna, Ben's gonna right. check their calendar, but somewhere on that. No week. Fridays. Yeah. Ben. For me, I won't be around. Megan, Ben. Thursday, if Monday possible. Monday through Thursday, yeah. Monday through Thursday. Shoot for Thursday, May right. 19th. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, uh, I'll distribute my notes from that meeting with them to everyone. Okay. Uh, Utility polls. Everybody read what? In the last couple of days, I made a point to count. And Aldrich Street, there are 47 double poles. They're everywhere. 47. Uh, Main Street, 9. Douglas Street, 25. Uh, Quaker Highway to Aldrich, 5. The, uh, the ones on Aldridge Street, they're fairly new because they, they did that project last year. But some of these things have been around for five years. And this subject, uh, when I was first on the board in 1987, we were talking about this problem. And it hasn't changed. <clears throat> there is a law on the books that they're supposed to remove them within 90 days. Mm. Uh, but Mass shut? A mass? Yeah. And every time you have one hit, there's there's a double pull. Yeah. There's a couple of triple yeah. pulls, too. Yeah. You're right. yeah. I have a triple on my private. Yeah. Uh, now, there is legislation that has been voted out by one of the committees that's going to come up, and it's quite onerous. I think you have a copy of it. I have a copy. So I'm sure the power company will lobby, and the phone company can lobby against it heavily. My hope is if we do something, um, it might move them to start fixing some of these things in order to buttress their case that the law shouldn't be passed. But either way, it should work in our benefit. Uh, they're supposed to keep records of how many they have. And uh, towns are supposed to be able to get those records. But I don't know if they do, in fact, keep the, keep the records. All right, then I think we should just get a draft up a letter. Why is there a echo over here? Feedback. Feedback. The speaker is turned up too high. Oh. So I guess we have Sean, draft up a letter. This is my view. Public hearing, we'll open a public hearing for alteration of premises VFW.
I also brought with me Rich. He's the president of the board of directors at the VFW. And we have the permit there. This is for the outside patio, right? Yes. Anybody have any questions? You know what we're talking about? It always about? amazes me how much work people have to do. I remember I was on the board when Rico's wanted to change the aisle where they had the beer and wine from one aisle to another aisle. And they had 15 people here with lawyers and all these blueprints and so forth, just to say that they wanted to move the beer from aisle A to aisle B. And keep in mind, you can walk into the market, put the beer and wine in your cart, and go all over the store, and you don't need a permit. And then you can pay for it and put it in your car and drive to Mexico, and that's okay. But to change it from aisle A to aisle B takes an act of Congress. That shows you what happens with government gone amok. And that's what we have with the Alcohol Bever Beverage Control Commission. But if we didn't have it, where would the politicians get jobs for all their <laughs> relatives and uh, friends? Anybody have any questions on this? No, I don't. You, you know they got there, right? Right. That's it. Right, for a motion. Close the, pub, close the public hearing. Any public opinion? I'm sorry. Public opinion first. Um, I'm John Lewicki. I own the abutting property. I just want to make sure that there aren't any uh, issues there because 30 years ago I owned the lot adjacent that now has the two duplexes on it and the VFW's deed was wrong and they were effectively uh, encroaching by deed. And I just want to make sure that it's not going to encroach on the parcel that I own that is adjacent uh, still. You're just adding a little deck. Uh, and in which direction is it going from? It's going to be in the front. Oh, OK. Then yeah. it's already total non yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? Close the public hearing. Make a motion. I'll make a motion that the board approve the alteration of premises of the VFW 13 Cross Street. A second. 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 Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go on to uh, strategic projects, updates. Did anybody have anything to add to that list that we put together last week? Did you have anything? Um, no, not here to add. I guess we talked last week on each one of us picking some, not picking, but taking responsibility for some of these things. Um, I think last week, Bruce, you mentioned the uh, boards, committees. Right. I, uh, I talked to uh, Tracy today. I have some other things going on in my life right now. Uh, I'll do the best I can with the board. but. It definitely needs to be updated, all boards and committees. I talked to Tracy on the phone this afternoon, and I'll definitely take, take that. That's not a problem. I just need to get a current update of who's on it, contact person, and then I can go to that board contact person. 
well, what are we going to do with the fact that the cable committee hasn't submitted minutes for two years? That's one of the ones I was talking to her about. I mean, but what is there to talk about? I mean, they haven't done anything in two years. So um, there's a meeting coming up. The 27th. That's, that's, do they have a full board? I believe so, yes. And what are they going to do with that meeting? 27. Yes. Explain why they haven't had yeah, minutes for two agenda, years? Yeah. Minutes, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I don't have minutes. I believe the agenda is posted on the bulletin board already. So Sorry, what? The agenda is posted on the bulletin board. Oh, you can okay. see what's on there. I don't know off the top of my head. Well, they have lots of agendas. Yeah. I mean, I counted it. They had 12, 12 agendas, but they didn't have any, um, any outcome. <clears throat> Uh, someone from this board, do you want to go to the meeting or recommend we send a letter to them prior asking that we strongly encourage them as our only course of action? I'd fire them. I mean, I don't understand why in government, maybe we'll, we'll suspend them with pay. How's that? Like that police chief thing. I was planning on going to the next uh, meeting. Right. Yeah. We're going to sit on that. Would you, would you, minutes. We, well, would you bring it up on behalf of the board? I think it's fair to let them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just wait. Do, do you want to talk? Okay. While we're on the conservation commission, um, I thought we were on cable. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. They start with a C. That's why I was confused. Okay. Well, we can jump they have right a down there. They have a guidelines. meeting downstairs. <laughs> right uh, now. No. Uh, the, they were working on uh, fixing up the pond house. You, you, were you in, did you know about that? Yeah, I they know were, they were. They were. Okay. Um, and I reminded David. He's gone. Okay, that there are certain. Right. He's a. Certain requirements, certain statutory requirements that you have to meet, um, and apparently, they're not not doing anything now. What, what's the status? Status is approximately a week ago. We and we finished a, a full investigation of all the issues involving the lease of uh, the lease rental or sale of the Pow Pond House. Um, we we was, would be basically myself, I discussed it with the town manager. Um, I did have council review a town, town meeting from 1998 that previous council in rendering an opinion had, had never looked at just to, just to get a confirmatory. Uh, on those town on that town on those town meeting minutes what it basically comes down to is the conservation commission is in full con control of that particular property it is a vote of the commission that will decide whether and how they want to dispose of it however if they wish to dispose of it under article 97 they of the massachusetts constitution they need a two-thirds vote of both the House and the Senate to get permission to dispose of the property. Now, disposal is defined uh, for this purposes as declaring its surplus as available for lease or for sale. So if they want to lease the property, they're determining it as surplus. They need, they need that. And there was a 1998 vote of town meeting to de declare the property surplus for the purpose only of leasing the property. If they wanted to sell it, and there's never been an indication, but uh, Selectman Bagdazarian and I had a conversation at one point about the sale of the property, they would need to go to town meeting to declare it surplus, then, they, then, it would, then we'd need special legislation crafted in order to be acted on by the House and Senate. Regarding the 98 vote, of town meeting. There is no evidence in any session law that it was ever put forward to the House and Senate for a vote. That's correct, it was not. So it has not been brought forward. So if conservation deemed that they wanted to lease it, we would have to craft special legislation and bring that forward and we could use that 1998 town meeting vote. 
um, the, the final option that is available um, according to the state and, con and confirmed by council is, we, is there could be a license given to rent it on a month-to-month -month basis. However, for that license to remain valid under Article 97, it has to serve one of the three purposes um, that set forth as part as a condition of that property being open space, conservation, or recreation. Um, all of so, if you were going to give a license to an individual to reside in that property on a monthly basis there must be some correlation to one of those three purposes, otherwise it's invalid. All that information has been forwarded to, con to the Conservation Commission. Um, and I've told them that either myself or the town manager would be available to discuss it with them at a future meeting. Up to this point, we have not heard anything back. Um. I don't know why you had to go to town council because everything you said mm -hmm. was known. Uh, there's nothing new there, so that and that's a separate issue. But the, the house serves no purpose for the pond itself. I, as you know, it was rented for years to an individual for seventy-five dollars a month, but it's been vacant for a long time. It doesn't make sense to let that property, which is a house lot with water and sewer, uh, but towns are the absolute worst property owners. They never take care of property, and it, that shouldn't continue. It just doesn't make sense to do that. It's an absolute waste of money. Could I say something about property, Peter? We have a whole book of property that we're not receiving a cent from. I know. I think we should take a look at that book, too. I, I have no objection to that. But he, this is one property that we know. Um, apparently, the Conservation Commission was interested in doing something with it. I think they are. You know? So why not? I mean, it just doesn't make sense if any of us here owned that property. It wouldn't sit there rotting. If any of you owned that property, it wouldn't sit there rotting. If any individual in Uxbridge owned it, it wouldn't sit there rotting. And here we are, chief executive officers of the town, and year after year after year, we sit by, stand by, and allow property to just go to waste, and it just doesn't make sense to me. What are you recommending we do with the property? Well, you can either rent it or sell it. As I explained to David, when I own property and I sell it, I get the money for the property but I lose any income I got from the property. When the town owns property and we sell the town, if we own property, we get no income. When we sell property, we get the money and we get income. I mean, nobody else in the world has a deal like that. But that's the deal the towns have. And we don't, we don't do it. It doesn't make any sense. No case can be made that it's, we should just sit, spit back and let that building go to waste. I'd like to, if anyone can give me a reason why we should continue that way, I'd like to hear it. So you, you recommend that we should put the property up for sale? If it were me, absolutely I would do that. If we rent it, we have all the problems that landlords have, right? We'd be responsible for various things and towns aren't good at that. There was a time when I was on the board, I found out that the town owned a house not too far from the town hall that we took for taxes and then rented back to the people who lived there and hadn't been collecting rent for 10 years. And no one knew. This, this is what happens with towns. People change, boards change, and no one knows anything. So someone's sitting, enjoying town property for nothing, for year, year after year. 
on the news there was some country club or some some uh, beach club or something that in some town that hadn't been paying rent for years and using the property. And this happens everywhere. But I don't want it to happen in Uxbridge anymore. Well, that's pretty much up to conservation right now, right? Well, keep in mind now, town meeting put that property into the care of town uh, right. conservation commission. That's not deeded conservation land. Right. And town meeting can take it away from the conservation commission. And the, uh, but again, since conservation commission, by their own actions, made a declaration that it serves no purpose as far as the pond is concerned, or the recreation aspects of it, they should have, can have, no rational objection to the town selling it off. And special legislation, that kind of thing is routinely granted. It's not a controversial issue. So, so you're suggesting that we compose a warrant article for fall, excuse me, for fall town meeting that would take back the control of that? If, if the Conservation Commission doesn't think they want to dispose of the property declaring that surplus, I would, I would recommend that, yeah. The objective is to get some return to the owners of the property, which are the people of the town of Uxbridge. I think that's uh, one of their issues they're talking about down there tonight. They're not talking about skunk, skunk cabbage? Ah, uh, not tonight, I don't think. So I, I guess I'm confused. What is the next step of this particular piece of property? So the Conservation Commission is... I think... Discussing what? They're discussing whether or not they want to rent it out, want to fix it up. I think that's part of their discussion tonight. Along whether they with want to try to pass itself. special legislation so they can do that. Right. Oh. Along with Pout Pond itself. Tim, uh, Selectman Rice asked me earlier if they're going to have swimming lessons. Well, I think that's something they're talking about down there, too. I, you know, I, I didn't look at their uh, agenda, but okay. they said something they were talking about. This, some of these projects. I was what the status of the zoning bylaws? Zoning bylaws, it's, this is something you keep bringing up, Pete. I, from what I, the definitions is what bothers me on that thing, because I've gone through both, both of them. Yeah. Um, not so much what's in it, is what if you look up, at, for instance, the one I first looked at was the junk cars, the regi unregistered cars. But you don't know one, two, registered, what's unregistered. You have to go back to the back of this and look up the definitions. And I said right along that I think that when they took all that definition out, the old one has it. And you read what can be done. But as far as the, and you had mentioned one time that you can't put a telephone pole on your land, going to file on. Now I don't know where you got that, but. In the definition, you, the, in the table of uses, there is a use called essential services. And then if you look at the definition of essential services, it lists all those things. That was in the definition. Okay, so that's, that's where I see the problem. I don't know. I thought maybe that was in a bylaw that you saw that you can't have a pole in the Well, you can't. Land. You can't. Well, because well, you, you, you can only have essential services in residents A and B, but only with ZBA approval. You're not allowed to have essential services in residents C, agriculture, business, or industrial. You're not allowed to have water lines, sewer lines, telephone lines, cable lines, whether above ground or underground. You're not allowed to have them. But if you think we, you can solve the problem by changing definitions, that's that's great. I'm not solving any problem. I'm <laughs> trying to. You're the one that keeps saying the bylaws are way out of focus, and I think you should write the ones you want to look at, and we'll discuss them. I know what you want to do. You want to take the old bylaws and put them in. That's what you well, said the last meeting. Well, 
I have looked at it and looked at it and looked at it, backwards and forwards, upside down. I don't know how to fix it in the current format. It's much, much more difficult than going back to what we had and making whatever changes you want in the process. However, Carrie Robinson sitting right there when this was brought up, she said, we can't go back to what we had. And no one said, gee, why can't we? So to me, that would be the first step. If it's true that we can't go back, and I don't know why that can be, but I'm, not, I'm only one of five people here. Well, if you're not sure on how we can do it, why don't we, why don't you bring it up and we'll discuss it. Maybe five of us can do it in the new one. Nothing's going to happen okay. if the four of you do not see a problem. You see, I'm the only one apparently that sees a problem. If you don't see a problem, you know, uh, and a I'm problem. not trying to convince you otherwise. I don't, I'm not a salesman. I don't want to con change people's minds. And I don't ask you to accept my view. When I tell you something, I read it. I read the bylaw. And that's where well, my information comes from. Discuss it with us. How you think it should be changed, or why we, maybe we get to come up with an idea of what you think should be changed. I mean, if not, then I guess we'll take that discussion off the board. And there's no other way I can see doing it if we're not gonna discuss what you'd Peter, like to- is the whole kit and caboodle the, the not good, or is it just specific ones that- The structure, the basic structure- I know everyone has problems with very structure. inconvenient. Yeah, I understand. And that. very difficult to make sense out of. For someone who's familiar with the old structure. No. No, no, forgetting the old structure. Just forget about the old structure. Just looking at what you have. Mm -hmm. Look at now, <clears throat> our current bylaws talk about the, the, those uses mm -hmm. listed in the table of uses. Those are principal uses. And then in the body of the bylaw, there's a, something entitled accessory uses. Mm -hmm. Read what accessory uses says and you will see it doesn't make any sense. And that carries through over and over and over again. So you recommend roll back to the old ones? I'm, and I'm, then not, make, I'm and not saying that. Okay. What I'm saying is, the first thing I want to find out, now I know of no reason why we can't go back. But apart from uh, that. Who cares why we can't, we can do whatever we want. No, 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 you can't do whatever you sure. want. Sure. No, no, no. Well, will, we can get it there. Oh, no, no, there are things that are covered by, uh, by state law. Carrie said. But she's not here anymore. I know that. But that doesn't mean she's disappeared from the face of the earth. She said that we can't go back. No other member of the board said, gee, why is that? I'm asking the question. I wasn't here then, but I heard her say it. I'd like to know why. Go we'll ask Carrie. Why do I have to answer for Carrie? I did ask her. <laughs> okay. She didn't have an answer. All right, great. So let's so move on. That Carrie's not here no anymore. Answer. What's right. the next? What's we'll the next? On. What's the next thing? So how do we? How do we get off the stump? We're on the stump, right? We're in a place that you're, you're not you're, comfortable with. Yes, but you're not going to get off the stump. I'm telling you, you're not going to do it. That, the will is not there. The will's there. Listen. Talk about it and change it. Can't be that many problems with the definitions. I know there's problems, and I agree with you. The, the other one's easier to understand than the new one, but the new one is. Is what? Not that difficult if you, well, spend, now that I've read it a few spend times, some time in spend it. some time in it. And it's different. Now yeah. that you spend some time, do you think it's, it's workable? I think it could be workable. Could be, it could be. Well, With we have, we have a board. document. We have right. a document. It's either workable or it's not workable. Anything could be made workable. I can make an automobile fly if I do enough. I think it's workable. Okay, then that would be certainly the easiest way to do it, right? 
So why don't you try that way? Because well, that's what I'm I want one. you to take. I want no, you to no, take that. I don't think it's workable. Oh, okay. That, that's why I'm saying, if I thought it was workable, I would say, gee, All I right. can make these little changes and... Then I'll take that off the discussion then. Okay. All right. Jay, is there anything on this that you... Uh... On the mass, I'll, I'll just give you my, I kind of give you the update on the EPA stuff. That's why we're here tonight to get that scheduled time on the water and sewer piece. On the master fields uh, component, I, I had a very brief transaction um, with uh, Paul Polino, who's now on the rec commission. And I owe him a phone call back um, to continue that forward. So that's still on my list uh, of to-dos. I just don't have a material update at this meeting. All right. Um, the COA building in the front of town hall, I think David could just give a little input on where we, what's happening on the because we've got a report back. Sure. Um, in your email today, um, you got the uh, remediation report from the consultant having to do with the interior issues of the building to be torn down. Um, that is now going to be incorporated into the IFB. The IFB is going to be advertised in the Central Register next Tuesday. Um, we're firming up the rest of the dates, but uh, the IFB will be due back, will be completed and due back for proposals by, I believe, we had it scheduled for right around the end of July. So we're going to be writing it this week. It'll be available starting next Tuesday. We're going to advertise it in the Telegram and in Gazette within two weeks. So now that we have that, it's going to start moving and the goal is to have the uh, the building down based on the timeline probably by october and people can bid on different aspects of it yes you'll be you can uh, we're going to have it basically set in two stages you can bid on either stage the town will take the lowest of the two combined bids so you can bid remediation you can okay. bid you can bid removal right. or you can bid both so that'll, that, that, the IFB will be written starting tomorrow in order to get it done for next Tuesday. Okay. You know the parking in the front, the other park? Down here we haven't, there's gonna have to be a plan done on that. So I'll just stay on, I'll, be, I'll stay on top of David. That the, I was gonna, on the water sewer maintenance, I just started putting together a list of what DPW takes care of, what pumps, I know I'm going to go to the school and see. I know they got one down there, so we have an idea of who maintains, where the cost is coming from. But I'm just putting that list together. In the, in the winter, is that going to be discussed at all for for the school? For the school? No, but it can be. I'm sure that um, I would think that the town will be taking care of it. I would, I would think so too. But I don't know about the backside. They've talked about a small truck in the back yeah. from the school, but. I'm going to put all that information together so you can also, so we can see where the is the school going to take care of that pump down there, or is the sewer, you know, the yeah, no. DPW. Gonna, so that's but that's what that's yeah. what we're going to find out. We're going to find out the EPA upgrade. We going to meet on that. The uh, conservation guideline. So last meeting we talked about a need to give them some parameters. I think Sean was doing something right now, wasn't he? Cutting their agenda in half and then. Right. Then we were going to. How can he cut, his, cut their agenda in half? I mean, people go to the conservation commission. Yeah, I don't. I for guess because it's. Did you? If you watched that last meeting, it was what four hours or something. I, yeah, I think we've all had meetings though that have gone. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I want to talk to Sean, but I think it's, he was trying to get the the feel of what's transpiring in the meeting. Rather, you know, the short agenda rather than a long one. I mean, he's not going to keep it that way. He's just trying to find out. I think he's just investigating. But I don't, I don't know I don't, how he controls, how the, the commission controls the agenda. 
you know. He's talking to them. I, I don't know. I really can't answer those questions. All right. so. I mean, we can try Last to Last meeting, kind of Peter, you said the, there's guidelines for the commission. You said it would take I two minutes. I didn't say there are. Uh, they, they, could, they should be. Yeah. It would take two minutes to write them. That's what I wrote as a note. We're going to start telling the boards how long they can meet. No, no, no. no, no the guidelines? Yeah. No, no. Uh, for instance, should we ask some qualifications before we appoint people Correct. on the Conservation but Commission? Should we look for people, a balance of people that have some land instead of having I don't understand members? that requirement at all. I don't think you have to own land to be on the Conservation Commission. Well, I didn't say that. You said it last time. No, no, no. Yeah, I, she, no, I didn't say that. I said currently a majority of the members of the Conservation Commission have very little land. One owns but these, nothing. A, but their job the is to control other people's property. That's the job. Yes. So is it is it reasonable to have people whose job it is to control other people's land actually have some knowledge and experience because they They're own land themselves? To just abide by the state regulations. Well, there is a lot of judgment that enters into things. And if you watch the Conservation Commission meetings, um, you will see that the, I don't see a lot of judgment, ex good judgment exercised. So you were going to write up, that's a, I remember this conversation, you were going to write up guidelines. You said it would take two minutes to write up guidelines that we could put in as we look to qualify people well, for our point. That's it. Do we, do we want to have some qualifications? Do we want to have some members, you know, we want you to own some land rather than people just want to control other people's property? You mean the ones that live in the condominiums? Well, no matter where they live. You might rent an apartment. So they shouldn't be on it. I didn't say that. Oh. I didn't say that. I did not say you must own some land in order to be a member. I said, I think it's reasonable and appropriate to have at least some members of the Conservation Commission that have some knowledge about what it is to be responsible for lots of land. It's a lot of work. That's not the same thing as saying you have to own such and such a land in order to be a member. They're two different things. I thought you were going to propose something to the board that we would adopt as a guideline for appointment. That, was I mistaken, no. mistaken no. by no. If, if you agree that we should have, we, we might, it might be advisable to have some conditions of what we're looking for, then fine. Oh, but I think, until, I think if we should you don't agree to that, that, then there isn't any sense in doing it. One step at a time. I don't want to push anybody into things. I think it's good practice to have guidelines for every committee that we define what the ideal candidate would be. I, I agree with you. Recognizing that in all situations we're not going to get the ideal candidate and we I still agree have to make decisions. When we point people to the Recreation Commission, you know, we have so many people that, that are involved in football and, I don't know, yeah, soccer, ball games, yeah, about yeah. games, you know? You wouldn't put me in the, on the Recreation Commission. I don't know a football from uh, <laughs> Cannonball. Well, I'm in favor that we that we put together these these ideal candidates. So let's start. Yeah. Let's do one for yeah. the. Uh, I as someone, I think part of the feedback that Bruce is going to get from these commissions will be helpful um, when we get the report of current committees that are out there on it. That we use that, and then each one pick off what that definition is. So I motion that the board take an effort. I'll take a motion at the board write candidate descriptions for our various subcommittees and committees. Uh, do we write those qualifications or the town manager appoints those? Oh, he, we can, he, you know, that's can right, we can do that. That's why I read that. We can do the qualifications that we think we should be looking for for each board. He just we, picks the. Yes. 
we can't, we don't dictate the choice right. to the manager, but we can give them recommended guidelines. I don't know if we need a motion on that. We can yeah. we'll keep it on the list and keep, yeah, keep it on. I mean, we should do probably do look at the boards as a whole, but yeah. start there. stuff that we I had the point uh, let's see that's the next your board what are you on the committee you have are you coming in here on the uh next meeting it was gonna next. be Sean wasn't here today so it makes sense to do it because we're really town he's on vacation oh so. and uh, I did the police department qualifications for candidates we can go into uh, executive session on what do you mean qualification for candidates? Well, we talked about the same with the conservation. What kind of qualifications? I mean, it's his appointment. Yeah. That we'd like to. You talking about police chief? Police chief. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Police okay. chief. It's yes. a, a civil service job. Right. So, so they they can get a provisional appointment, which is good for 18 months, and then they have to take the exam to be the chief. Right. So and civil service will get their background and whatnot. So the appointment now would be only provisional until they pass the exam. Right. So that's something you brought up last week, so I think next agenda we can... Uh, and Sean will be back. Right. I just wanted to let you know. I was know hoping that, that we could collaborate on it and talk about it. And I know he has the final decisions, but I don't really see that coming. The other thing we had in the list, uh, Tim brought up last time was this uh, exception list report. I think you were going to oh, yeah. take an action to talk to Sean as well. I was going to talk to Sean when he came back. Mm -hmm. And then as a board, we would give him some parameters. The things you kind of really, you know, what he does in a week is what's important that we all should know. We have the read file, but sometimes there's things that he should tell us or myself and I would tell the board. I'll discuss that with Sean and then let him even know what right. try to have, get something for every meeting or once a month or whatever. Uh, and then we got a point of what a health and other next meeting too. I think Jim Smith. Jim Smith. Said Jim said, that one. Yeah. Well you said that he would take it. Yeah, yeah. I said no. The other item, Pete, we had in here, um, based on Peter's comment last week around the, the budget and kind of getting into um, understanding oh, yeah. the budgeting project uh, process, or not understanding it, but looking at last year, looking what's what's coming, and how do we really dig into the details better than any board has in the past for, for the good. And I think when we sat down the other day to kind of go through the agenda, we were struggling with what the what the appropriate starting point would be. You know, and we're looking for suggestions from you, Bruce, and anyone as to, you know, where do we start to crack the nut on this? What's kind of a proposed uh, we were just looking at what's coming up for the uh, debt. That's why David looked into that. We had to sift there, but if we're off to 17, 18 before we really have any debt coming up. So what what is kind of the proposed approach? You know, we pick a department, and, and next week we talk about the department. Uh, we, you know, how do you rec recommend we might come together and have a fruitful discussion to influence this budget and provide our input? Are you talking about the regulatory or the like the DPW or the water department? No. We're just I, talking in general. You know, you've got a, a $37 million budget and we want to be able to get more engaged with the budget. Where, where, where do we start? 
this out with the police. Let's pick a department. Yeah. Let's go through a department. All right. Look at their overtime and see if there's some way we can get that reduced and we don't have dispatches on board for $51 an hour. Things like that. You know, but we get um, dispatches per diem in line, but why aren't they being used? Peter, would you agree that's a good approach to kind of take it one department at a time and then let's go back at next meeting or, or two or whatever we think the appropriate number is and then let's say, all right, next meeting we're going to talk police, fire, and right. ambulance. And then carve out some time in the agenda to go through. Yeah. So I, like I just first? go one step further back. Okay. Look at all the departments. But look at what they do and ask the question. What are they required to do? Mm -hmm. Some departments are required to do things by state law. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we do beyond what's required? What's the benefit from doing it? How much does it cost and so forth? because we have to make some fundamental decisions. Frankly, I was surprised when Ben said that he is going to do all this administrative work for renewal and gravel pits. Now, um, I don't know if he's talked to Sean, but if I'm the town manager and the head of the DPW is telling me that he is going to sit down at the computer and, and look at it sending out a renewal application for a gravel permit, and then he's going to drive it down here and, and mail it. I mean, I'm going to say there's something wrong. That's not a good utilization of your time. Um, but apparently nobody is thinking of those things. Mm -hmm. and yet we have a lot of work that needs to be done at the DPW. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. So for next meeting, should we just take police and do one and get a gauge for how much progress we can make on one department yeah. instead of trying to uh, be overly ambitious? And the next one, maybe schedule a couple more if it works. All right. Well, maybe the boards and the commissions we can do, maybe two in a night, like the Board of Health and mm -hmm. the Conservation. Yeah. Um, you have to be prepared. That every department will tell you everything they do, they absolutely must do. If they don't do it, the world will definitely right. end. Right. But my experience has been that the world does not, in fact, end. The world somehow keeps rotating. It's called the inertia. Okay. Can I ask David a question while he's sitting here? Sure. Uh, we received a grant to pay for those new bylaws. It was $75,000. And we never paid the bill because the town was very unhappy with the work product. Where is that money? That money is still sitting in the grant. Okay. Is it our money or does it go back to the state? It is, it is our money. We have to report on it annually. It all has to do... It really, it really has to do with the expedited permitting. Okay. So we have to do an annual report to them as to what we're doing with it. One of the approved functions is to do something, something else with the bylaws. Okay. So there is, I believe, if memory serves, 68,000 thereabouts within okay. that grant. All right. Um, and it's my understanding that this um, big shot lawyer hasn't been hounding us for the money. That is correct. So apparently he is convinced that he didn't do a very good job. So that money is there. It is. Um, just keep that in mind. We can have a party for selectmen some night or something. That's not within the terms of the no? grant. Okay. Sorry. A bylaw writing part. Bylaw writing. <laughs> just have to Dave, may I ask you, uh, this grant, uh, Mary Gilfoy Fund and a bunch of other funds were put into a separate in investment? Yeah. I'm just wondering how the Gilfoy Fund just made $279 last year. Well, unf unfortunately, um, the investment cl climate has been pretty bad. Um, one of the things that we do do, we do take a conservative approach. Um, 
we are required to invest per the legal list, which basically does not give us a lot of flexibility. I mean, our financial manager calls us ve being very excited over something with a 2% coupon, which it still boggles my mind to hear that that's great news. But, you know, the problem is, the problem is there's not, is the board took a vote on to only expend annual income. Um, we did um, an annual income there is at $850 per year right now on that fund. For all, for that fund? For, for that, all that particular fund. fund. For that particular fund. So some of the money has been expended already? Yes. Can we find out where that went? Uh, it was a vote of the board. It was fire. There were several fire. fires this year in town. First in the same yeah. side. Uh, Hazel Street. And, one, and uh, there was the one on Summer? Church. Casey? Casey and the one by Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd, yeah. Is there any report on where all this money is? What did you invest it in? One of the... What? Well, you know, the, it's uh, part of a pooled investment, which includes, uh, let's see, uh, which includes developer bonds, the stabilization fund, uh, cemetery perpetual care. There's a whole bunch of groupings of what, what it's invested in. I can certainly give you a copy of the investment report uh, that shows everything. You know, every month we get a report that says everything, everything that it's tied up in. Um, and we do, we do book value, not market value, because we found that market value tended to fluctuate too much and it's not really realized profit it's book value it's what we'll get when we sell sell the per whatever where whatever the investment is and if if we wind up realizing any gain on that 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 shows up at that particular point it's just there's not any really good investment opportunities out there and there has been especially for a municipality I mean when you're a private investor you can invest in anything you want um, and maybe you'll win and maybe you'll lose. We are very restricted uh, just because we are a municipal entity. Weren't these set up, though, pretty much uh, specific by the person where that money was supposed to go and how it was to be used? And the, purpose was, the purpose is very exact, exacting. The investment vehicle isn't. Well, were they losing money? They're not losing money. They're just not gaining money. Were they losing money. before you did this? So put them into some other uh, pool? Um, they have been combined in a combined investment pool, my guess is, for the last 20 or so years. The only addition that we had was the developer bonds that we put into that. They, were, they used to be in, pat, in basically passbook accounts that were earning virtually no interest. Now they're included in that pool of funds. Um, but, you know, they originally, uh, when I got here, they were in Solomon Smith Barney. Uh, before, before that, they were invested in First Southwest. So they've moved around, but they've moved around pretty much as a group for a number of years. I'd like to see that investment, please. Sure, I'll, um, I'll I'll leave I'll leave a copy in your box tomorrow. Thank you. Who do who do we uh, benchmark ourselves against? Benchmark for what? Like on our investment returns, if we have some discretion as to how we invest, do we like how do we stack up on our return rate of return versus anyone else? Do we even? Well, we we don't benchmark with other communities because everybody everybody has different funds in different financial advisors, in different methods of liquidity. I mean, there, you know, obviously you get, you get to some towns where they can afford to tie large sums up of money for, you know, 10 or 15 years. You can buy a lot better investment vehicles. We have to keep ours fairly, fairly liquid because even looking at, you know, prior to probably the last couple of years, I mean, we were, we were routinely taking money out of stabilization every year, which is, the main, the main amount in that investment pool. Um, most of the other, you know, once you get outside that investment pool, most everything else is with Unibank, you know, and they're kept in their own individual funds for a number of various reasons. A lot of it is their special revenue accounts that have, you know, school, the school is depositing into and that sort of thing. 
uh, we basically maximize the interest as best we can, but there's just not, when you look at the legal list, it doesn't give you a lot of options. Don't we get a, uh, a break on the, uh, the fees that the bank would otherwise charge us? Yes, we, uh, we, we have no fees. Uh, yeah, it's not a con it's not a true compensating balance, yeah, but, the effect but is the same. right the effect we we pay we have no budget needed for any banking services. But if we were to buy long term bonds, for instance, mm -hmm. and then need that money, we sell them at a loss because right you know, we can't sell a uh, interest rates go up and you've got a three percent bond, you're not going to get par value for it. We have, we have, we're, we have. It's really well, restricted. We are. The legal. And and if we know were restricted, we wouldn't be much better off because I don't know what you do today. All the finance directors <laughs> in the Black Sun Valley go to a bar and talk about their, yeah. their 401ks and how they've, they've yeah. grown. Yeah. We, we've and actually. The equivalent of curse. We've more or less found that the best way that we can maximize income here is, to, is at this point in time, until the investment environment changes, We've got to maximize our return in our collections. That's real. That's you either can make it an in interest or you can do it in your collections. Ideally, you get both. We don't have both right now. So, I mean, that's why that's why we're doing the tax title sales that we're doing now, the lien sales. That's why we've been we've been aggressive with our tax our general tax collections. Everything everything for fiscal 2012, which ends in a cup ends next week everything is already in title we did that today so you know the best thing that you can do when you can't make interest is to stimulate your collections any way you can and that's what we do thank you sure thing we'll move on to the minutes meeting minutes We get two sets here. We get the suspended, and then it's easier to find. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve the 613 meeting minutes. Second. Motion, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does that cover both sets? No, we're going to have to, yeah, we should do one. All two. right. Then I'll make a motion that the board approve the second set of June 13th, 2012 meeting minutes with continuation. Meeting. Second. Been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Tell me your update. Any, uh, uh, any other member issues? We kind of. This is one question. Uh, the board used to have a policy for using town council. Do we still use that policy? I don't believe so. No. No. It used to be that um, before you can use town council. You, first, you have to specify the question you want asked and say that you've tried to get the answer through looking up the state law or, you know, calling some state agency and so forth. Uh, I mention that because I'm looking at the bills and I see more and more use of town council. Um, David said he, they call town council for the Pelt Pond House. Well, I've got a file on Pelt Pond this thick. And all those questions have been asked before. I read the um, questions submitted to town council regarding the um, sewer user fees. I mean, the questions answered themselves. I don't know why that went to town council. So apparently, 
if we're not holding to the policy, I guess we're not using that policy anymore. So who makes a decision of whether town council is used? Is it the manager's discretion? Yes. It's been the town manager, yeah. Okay. Doesn't have to be approved by the board? No. Okay. There was a time when the board said that in an emergency, the town manager can use town council, or the administrative assistant can use town council in an emergency. But absent that, you know, we want board wanted prior approval of it. Um, the bills are much lower than they used to. You know, I remember $150,000 $150, bills. But it's not so much the amount that I looked at. It's, it's should the question have been answered? asked in the first place and that's where I see some of this stuff going so maybe we should okay. reconsider the old policy and go back and say wait a minute before we go to town council let's see if we can find the answer somewhere anything else anybody I'll say. okay the motion to adjourn so moved. Second. Any seconds? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.